Um, so our first speaker is someone um, who's a friend of the of the foundation. He's been involved. He's given lots of talks actually, like so already. So he shouldn't be any stranger. It's like Rowan from Denim, like research, looking very very smart, sir. Um, you've got a lovely little studio as well. You're only a couple of miles away from, yeah, yeah. away from me, like towards Brighton. So um, super awesome. I'm not gonna. No need to. But Rowan's become a real force when it comes to knowledge. That him and Sally and a few others are awesome and who especially in the uk denim scene yeah pretty awesome stuff so rowan um let's take it away sir do share your presentation and i'll come in like near the end and ask ask some questions lots of luck to you thanks so much Mohsen. um it's a pleasure to be here again thanks a lot for transformers for inviting me actually um yes yeah, i think it's the third year in a row it's great um i love sharing as the, the guys say um and yeah just sharing so i'm gonna jump straight into it because i've got a lot i tend to try and put too much in to be honest but let me go straight into it so mine's about research and how to research well so then you can design better so quick overview what i'm gonna go through a bit about me on the background a bit about research embracing rabbit holes will become clear as I go through and this is a bit of a guide of where I'm going to go. Okay, hi, I'm Rowan Hunt. I'm a responsible denim specialist. I started denim research about 20 months ago. Um, the need to research more avenues, really. So I, I work with garment vendors. I work with mills because I want to know more. And, and the only way you can do it is by working with these guys. Before that, I worked with brands in the UK, Debenhams, Next, and Fat Face, as well, as well as I started my career working as a supplier, which is a really good place to start for M&S. So you know, three to five years I've spent at each one of these places, learning, design, product development, and working my way through, really. Okay, so let's just quickly start. Research, what is it and what defines good research? So this is the Oxford Dictionary. Research is a diligent, systematic inquiry or investigation into a subject in order to discover revised facts, theories, and applications, etc. That's great. But for me, research is a 24-7 passion that's endless. So it can be anything, you know, brands, catwalks, influencer. It can simply be an image of a building decaying and the colour coming through. So this is a quick idea of some of the things I've done. So catwalk images with mill images, with trade show images and brand images. And you can, this is how I kind of build my mood board from multiple avenues. Here's a quick outline. I'm going to do each slide on one of these, so I'm not going to spend too long, but these are the kind of areas I look into, multiple areas then to make one kind of trend. So I'll start here. So at Den Research came on an Instagram account. I wanted to put all my images somewhere so I could have them. And so as, as I see them on trips or anything, I put them on here as my open source that I can go into. Oh, where's that image? And it's there all the time and other people can look at it. And as a community, we share a lot of things, which is nice. So here are some images, some really cool uh, applique designs and start, um, repairs, some really cool kind of felted fabrics where they get the fabrics and they felt them back together. I want to know more about this. So I, I researched the company and they sent me some swatches, which is great. So I put them documented on there. Trade show images, so nice wash effects, interesting things to remind myself. Um, and then some of my vintage, so I lay them out in stories. I think actually you could do a really cool story from raw to vintage, for instance, on here. Okay, so I'm going to start with real world. For me, real world research is what you can go and see. So this is the v &A in the UK. It's um, a museum. They had a really great exhibition on um, a couple of years back on nature, fashion from nature. So they had things like um, roots. They did in a pattern to weave fabrics. Um, they had recycling. They had uh, different elements. There was a lot of mushroom here before it became massive. So I got a lot of fibre research. I didn't know at the time, but that's what I took from that. This is Ian Berry's um, exhibition in Hampstead I went to. I took a lot of images of the, the artworks, but also close in. So, you know, what inspiration can I get from this? Wash inspiration, other things. So he's using wash to make art, but then could I take something from this and make it something else, for instance? But it's just really cool image. Um, and then this was a couple of weeks back in Munich. This is Rudy's um, vintage range. Um, so here again, I look at vintage for fabric. I look at it for wash research and a lot of these kind of ideas. So it's three good examples in the real world. Hopefully this will make more sense now. Embracing getting lost down rabbit holes, the research rabbit hole. So the meaning here is I'll buy a book, I'll read it, and I'll love it so much, I'll look at the reference points. Then the reference points will lead me onto other books. And before you know it, this big web of research comes up, which is endless. So you're just going from stop to stop to stop. So here's a couple. I think we've, we've mentioned Nick's one already, but that's a great one reference point for trims, metal trims, uh, labels, patches. 
Um, a couple more on here on vintage. So a lot of Levi's at the start. Denim dudes is a great one for street shots. So if you want a nice mood board image, that's really nice. And if you're a reader, the last one, the Levi Strauss, the man who played, gave blue jeans to the world. This is a, a really interesting book um, to read and understand his story and what he went through. Okay, so this is what I do when I go out to shops and what I'll be researching because it's so vast. I want to give you a couple of examples. So here I might go to a vintage store, pull out some jeans, go, that's quite cool. And I might copy this for wash and I can put some water on it, do ozone washing and maybe get this kind of vintage look. Here, some looking at the details, cording, double RL do a lot of this. They put cording inside their twin needles. So then when you wash it, you get really high wash. Here again, fabrics. This, I got an image now, so I can give this to a meal, I can give it to a vendor and go, I want something like this. I love the crackle effects. You know, explain how it's done is, is the differential shrinkage and I can learn from it as well. Shapes, 70s, 80s kind of shapes. There's a lot in the vintage shops in the UK at the moment. So pleats are everywhere, um, dungarees. So this is an old gas, you know, an old 70s. This was in Brighton where I found um, a Levi's. It was an early LVC, but it had the painted arcuate. And because I'd read this book and looked at all the images, I knew, you know, that art painted arcuate meant it was from the Second World War because they weren't allowed to do the stitching. So this was a 1944 uh, uh, jean. So then when I got back and we said more into the trims, the rivets, I just got to know why things are done how they're done. And here a bit more kind of fashion edge. You know, this might be a catwalk image. I go to store, I see this in Selfridges in London. There's a vintage showroom, garment dyed, um, similar effect. This woman here, I, I tried to get on the, well, I, I did get on the tube in London, had my headphones on, she put a hand out to kind of stop me getting on the train and I ducked around and I was a bit under my breath, like, oh, what's going on? And I realized she had such a cool jacket, so I had to kind of sneak around and get an image. But as you can see, when you start putting these three together, it becomes a nice kind of mood board and wash effect and ideas. Okay, so another one person's trash, another person's gold. So here is about buying vintage, really. So eBay, Depop, Etsy, I've done a lot recently because obviously getting out to stores. This is a couple of examples. These two are really um, quite interesting because they're two jeans from the same person, which aren't the same, even though they look pretty much exactly. It's when you start looking at the details, the rips here, smaller, the cast is slightly different. Here's a full length factory so you can see. So I get this and I wouldn't stop at that. I go, right, wh when did you buy it? So I'd ask the guy, the guy was James Morris. He bought it five years ago and he, he washed it five times. I was like, oh, how, you know, can you tell me a bit more? And people love jeans. So they want to tell you about denim. So he said, look, I picked up two pairs at the same time. I alternated them. I'd only ever wash them in the summer. So that's why it's every you know, five times he washed it. And you're doing the summer period. So then you can leave it outside to dry. Um, and then he went abroad and lived in it. So maybe, the, you know, he's in a hotter climate. So you get this um, lovely kind of template. And then he told me a bit about, like, they don't make this fit anymore. I think it's one of Moshin's fits, um, the ED71. Okay, so what I look for when researching, I skip through this, because I think people have discussed fabrics that are during this show. So cast, interesting, you know, what casts do, where they start and where they finish and how they change as they go through. Handle, so stretchability, not stretch, softness and these kind of things. Reviewing the face of the fabric. So, you know, is it got a wet slub coming through? Is it a spaced out slub? Is it a rainy slub? Is it a tight slub? But here, what I didn't know, I never got taught this in uni, but looking at denim and you look at the reverse. So it gives you an idea of what why the face can look how it is. You know, this is an overdye. The slub character here affects the, the face. Here again, the darkness gives you a nice formal look. Here is actually where the weft is so coarse, it's pushing through to the surface. So it's a three-dimensional beautiful you know, jeans and denim fabric and how it moves. So that's how that's done, which is uh, yeah, amazing. Okay, wash research. So I can skip through this quite quick, actually. So looking at new chemicals, I need to be researching this. I need to know what new chemicals come to the market, what dyes are coming onto the market. Also how things are being processed, you know, laser templates, you know, how do you do it and how is it done? So this is an image from Bangladesh. This was my vintage. I created a template like this in Photoshop at the time. I burnt it on the gene. I see how it works on this fabric versus this fabric intensities. But you need to learn. But this is where you reach out to people like chemistry companies, dye companies, and machine manufacturers. People like Tonello was on yesterday. They're really open to sharing, teaching, so you can learn because you are the next generation that will be in the factory and telling people to use this machine. This saves water. This can do this. You, you need to wash in this machine to do this. Or in this ozone, for instance, in water, not in water, for instance. Reach out to these guys, they'll tell you a lot, you know, and I learned a lot, to be honest, and they're very, very generous with their information. 
Okay, a quick on the future, like virtual products. So here's one from our legacy I bought. Um, I found it really fascinating. It's a digitally printed jean, but it looks so good. And some of the wash patterns, you can't get this in washing and you can't reproduce this in production because the side to side shading, and the paneling, the twist is here, but actually the side seams here. So I worked with a 3D um, artist and I worked backwards actually, created it in 3D, did the lay plan to see how, what could this future be in, in, in how we could digitally print. So for instance, this is a lay plan. So you could print this in a shop, cut it so it make it in a day for instance. So this could be a, a really cool exercise. His name's Paris. He's a really great designer. There's not many of them in the denim industry. So it's definitely a gap if people want to research further into that. Okay, so now onto you, what you can do yourself at home, wherever you're kind of living. So investing in hands-on uh, primary research. So for me, best way to learn dyeing, get your hands dirty, get involved. Here is uh, at my home, really. I did it with the kids. Um, and I just yeah did multiple dyes, uh, a couple of dyes, no dyes played around here. Luckily enough, there was a course near me. There's books you can get. Nettles or weeds, you can get anywhere. Daffodils when they die, put the heads in. Onion skins, you get, you know, it's, it's rubbish actually. And then these are some of the beautiful colors you can get from uh, natural dyeing. Best way to learn designing denim, obviously get involved, design it, look at the pattern pieces. This is taken from one of the courses actually Mossin did in the UK. Um, it was great. I know how to make a pair, but I learned new tricks. You know, learn how to one piece fly. Um, I could play around more. I had ideas before I went, you know, can I turn the pattern piece this way? Can I put a salvage here and there and there? And it was a great way to learn and be become a better designer, really. Okay, this is the fucking onto the fun part. So these are some of my uh, jeans. So jean, fabric will start like this. And as you wear it, it becomes more, you know, like yellow shades and goes more green colors. But how could you reproduce this at home, for instance? So this beautiful T-shirt is coffee dye. So, you know, I tried it. I got my um, decaffeinated, you know, my coffee grounds and I got my tea bags that I'd used. I started tinting, got one jean, chopped it into three legs and just tried different things. And once I'm happy with it, I could send that to the laundry and say, look, replicate that. And I've done that at home as well my favorite slide so this is questions i had you know as a professional in, in the industry you know what happens when decomposes? everyone says decomposes quickly this and that so i want to research myself so i planted a gene um for the plan was 12 months um it went further than that i've, I've done a video on, on youtube you can find but i documented every four weeks to see how it changes it's 100 cotton the threads are polyester the metal works obviously metal so it don't decompose but it was me researching to see how things changed Again, you know, the sun, is it strong enough to discharge denim? This was after nine months. I did this on top of um, my mum's goat shed. Um, she has a small holdings. Um, I put some ropes in it. I twisted the jean a bit so I can get some nice creases. And I just left it up there. So it got wet, it got dried, it storms, sunshine, whatever. And it totally bleeds out. I was, I was surprised by how much actually come out of it in nine months over a winter period in the UK as well. Here, you know, hemp is, is a big thing, a big discussion. So I planted it in the UK just to see what could happen. This was, I got about, I think, three foot. Um, but yeah, it, it can grow. Um, it's great. And it's great to research yourself. The seeds are cheap as well. I'll quickly finish. I'm running out of time, I appreciate. Okay, so this is my resources I'd like to share with you guys. Podcast, you can listen to them while you're walking, while you're running, while you're doing jobs around the house. So you can learn while you're doing that. When you've got time to sit down, these are some good books to read about sustainability, um, more, yeah, more reading based. And this is like one shot of one of my shelves. So you can Google all these books, Nick's books there, Amy's books there. There's some really good reference points within here. And then online resources. If you've got time, you don't want to sit on YouTube. Blue Lens is a great one that has been created. Educational videos throughout um, vintage dealer advisor here as well. This guy in Japan um, that has loads of Levi's collected for many years, and he explains to you why things are how they are, um, and it's got subtitles, so you don't need to know Japanese. Oh, hopefully, I didn't go too quick for you guys. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, if there's any questions, that was superb. Oh my god! And uh, twenty minutes, <laughs> was that fifty minutes. That went so fast, and um, I really enjoyed that. And you know, it's really interesting because obviously, it's all, you and I have known we've known each other for years. We even went went to the same college. But it's just it's just really interesting to see how you know you and I have both followed the similar paths, but you've gone into yeah. a lot more in the aspect of finishing and, and like creating and production side. And it's true to be a good designer. You need to know the making side and you need to be very open and immerse yourself in things, even if it's not your 
even if it's something that you're not strong at, you just if you can understand it slightly, you will become a better designer or a better manager or whatever to explain 100%. it to other people. But um, you've been doing loads of research with regarding, you know, sort of, sort of you and I like sort of like sort of like collecting vintage garments. We both do it. Yeah. I would tell everyone, you know, I've got an archive of more than two thousand pieces that are around me, and it's 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 everyone's very surprised by that. But I'm like, but I was like sitting again. I don't like to go and copy washes too much. I like to create stuff from real garments. It's more, everything's in the correct place. If you start just copying a photocopy of a photocopy of a photocopy, right? Exactly, yeah. You need primary. That's why I talked a lot about the primary research and seeing it, seeing how fades come through, why they come through. And then you can start, because yeah, I've, I've had that before where you copied a bought garment and then it just doesn't look very good in the end. So we've got some authentic. questions. We've got three questions. So let's see what they are. Um, hello, Rowan. Okay, uh, what? Uh, so, 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 Zaki Salim is asking, what's 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 the different terms of like design to the final product when it comes to good research or not good research? That was a slightly trick question. question. Yeah, yeah I, I always yeah, I, I, I got taught some my career that knowledge is power. When you when you've got a good knowledge, good understanding, um, it, it, you can get good products at the start, and then you're yeah. just finessing, and then you go down your like you were saying down your own field. So I've got more research and washing based, and you've gone more into the making side. But right. I need to know the making side, so that's why I, I joined you on that course. So I can get don't forget about these things. Every element's um, important to research. I think, what, I think what it is also, Rowan, like as us, us us as designers and like consultants, we're always having to constantly come up with new collections and new <laughs> ideas. And many people ask me. How is it you got so much, uh, how much, how can you knock out so much great work? And I'm like, we're constantly researching. It doesn't actually stop. It's not a yeah. constantly. And that's something, that's you know. Right. That's right. 24 seven, you might be in front of the computer and then you're researching on your phone or your iPad or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. passion. Okay. Yeah, and it, it, it comes, yeah. If you've got passion for it, it comes with, with the kind of the job, so, which is great. Question from like MTRs. How, how do you get your hands on, on like training or, you know, connected physically obviously you've been lucky enough to travel yeah. to a lot of places to learn right traveling is the best form of education right yeah definitely inside the factory is great but it, that doesn't it doesn't stop you um like sally mentioned yesterday actually if you want to know something and you find their name act to sell for a chemical supplier i reached out to this guy i didn't know him then he opened arm told me lots of stuff and then i've seen new chemicals coming through and new innovations and then you connect people up and you sh you give what your opinions is they give back to you and even as a student, you can reach out to these guys and even me, reach out to me. I'll, I'll give you the contacts, whoever you want to speak to. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's an I'm, community. I'm the same. I get a lot of fan mail and a lot of people saying thank you or thank you for sharing this slide. And I'm like, dude, there's no point in me hoarding this information. It's not going to benefit me. So if the more I can share, the better it is for everyone. So yeah. Definitely. Um, sure. Let's see, let's see. Love your back, love, love your background wall. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that was the one thing for me. When, when I get this place, can, let me hang jeans on the wall. So I walk in every day, I see a jean, I, I alternate whatever jeans I've got. I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that, and it's always in my head. <laughs> um, uh, so, like, Miraz is asking, great, great presentation, perfect guideline for like designers to learn about. Also, attached, would you, I, I would like to know more about the many years it took for you to find the, find like, find like, the, find your like rhythm. Obviously, You've been a multi-product designer, so you did many other things, yeah. and then you ended up becoming a denim designer like like me. So, um, how did you get your rhythm? Obviously, you're now a consultant now. So, yeah, I, to be honest, I, I would advise what I've done. I, I I started a supplier. If you go straight into a brand, some brands can be good, but sometimes they keep you away from the products. What's actually going on? So, actually, working as a supplier, I learned so quick. I was on plane straight away, and I was seeing things. And then I progressed through and I found my rhythm, to be honest. Um, Sally was one of the ones who actually pushed me and said, look, I was doing, uh, I think it was a fat face. I was doing outerwear, trousers, shirts and everything. And then doing garment dye, heavy washing. And she'd be, you should do denim. I said, I haven't got time. And she was consulting on the denim side. And then she said, just try it. You'll like it. And then, yeah, you once you're hooked, you're hooked. You can't, you can't get away. The thing is, being a multi-product designer and a lot of a lot of fashion colleges that you know or a lot of designers that i meet um some mm. of our american friends and some people from asia as well they focus very early on on bottoms or tops and then yeah. their career gets slightly hindered because they can't jump around a bit obviously for us who are multi-products we can do accessories one minute or we can create a website another minute or we can <laughs> do shirts if there's a, a shirt project you know so yeah. it's all quite i think 
opening yourself up to lots of different ways of designing is quite important. I, the first five years, I was, a, I was an outerwear designer, which is a technical right. designer to do. So that taught me to look at all the details. And you get one detail wrong, like a, a wadding you left on on a, on a summer jacket, and the whole thing's ruined. So you learn a quick lesson. So, you know, I, I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't jump into denim earlier because I probably wasn't ready. You know, so you find your way. Uh, but reach out to guys like us, like you as well. Like you, you, you give away so much for free. Um, oh, no. things, me, but it's great. It, 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 I, I get I get sponsored by lots of people, and I get, I get paid and paid in other ways. So um, it's it's if I can do a free half an hour discussion about hemp or like new ways of working, all the better for me. And and as I said, I'm only doing it so my life becomes easier. So many people know the ways of working as well. So that's all. It is. I'm just helping everyone else. I'm helping everyone like level up. That's all it really is about. Uh, but Rowan. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Your presentation was what a great opener and what an awesome, awesome way to begin the third day of Transformers Ed Pakistan. Thank you so much for your time and see you again soon. Lovely. Thanks so much, Mosin. See you later, All guys. Right. Thank you. Thank you.